Medical Explorer. As you've heard from my health tip tonight, the subject of advertising has become a more prominent issue in medicine lately. Before the 1970s, advertising by doctors was often considered unethical and prohibited by state and national medical associations. Around that time, however, the Federal Trade Commission decided that professional groups, including doctors, lawyers, accountants, etc., could not restrict their members from advertising. And it was this decision that started an advertising trend that's making its way into our community. I personally use advertising to inform you about the schedule of these Medical Explorer programs. Without this type of advertising, there'd be no way for you to be informed about things happening here on Cable Channel 5, like the new Pharmacy Corner, as an example. Doctors also regularly use advertising to tell you about their new offices, locations, or medical associations. Our guest tonight has recently begun a type of advertising that stimulated some controversy and discussion. Let's meet our guest, Yuba City gynecologist, Dr. Damon Stutz. Dr. Stutz, welcome to the Medical Explorer. Thanks a lot, Bob. Really appreciate you being here tonight. Thank you. I've heard that uh, your recent advertising campaign has stimulated a lot of discussion and thought and even some complaints. What's happening? Well, uh, actually, it's... it's uh been quite exciting. I, I originally advertised to let my patients know that I did have a, a change in my practice pattern. I'm not delivering babies anymore. And um, the cost of sending letters to the thousands of patients that I do have would have been prohibitive. And so I thought to uh, find a more creative way to do that. Uh, did you have any guidance in setting these up or was this your own idea? Well, the guidance that I claim for uh, setting these commercials up was uh, personal experience in uh, entertaining over the last couple of years. Uh, as you know, obstetricians are awake at all uh, hours of the day and night, and to uh, fill those hours, I watched a lot of uh, television, and uh, my favorite was uh, MTV and VH1. And so uh, uh, from all that uh, uh, music watching, uh, which is a funny term. It's definitely an 80s term. Yeah, right. uh, I, uh, I felt like I had an experience uh, that was uh, pretty unique. So what you're trying to do is reach your patients, letting, you, letting them know that you're not leaving medicine, you're just leaving obstetrics and going to be around in gynecology for quite a long time. Exactly. And tall, too. <laughs> Could I ask you why you're giving up obstetrics? Well, uh, I think that everybody would pretty much have the same experience that I would. Uh, it's in the newspapers, it's on television. Uh, the cost of malpractice insurance is, is uh, just outrageous. And uh, also the cost in emotional terms of um, uh, being subjected to malpractice litigation is, uh, is very high and I could no longer pay the price. Well, before we discuss further these actual commercials, why don't we take a look at the first four our viewers should realize they're each 30 seconds long, and we're going to look at four of eight that have appeared on television in this community. Great. Let's I'd love to. Let's take a look. Starting one is uh, titled Jet Pilot. Did you know it takes over 20,000 hours to train an Air Force pilot and more than twice that long to train a gynecologist? Some people think that it's because gynecologists are slow learners. Hi. I'm Dr. Stutz, the world's tallest gynecologist. If you have a gynecological problem, why don't you bring it to the one gynecologist whom all others look up to? Just call or come by my office today for your appointment. Now, this uh, commercial uh, was actually the brainchild of myself and a friend of mine who was an SR-71 pilot. And we discussed uh, many times the amount of time we spent training, and that was uh, what it was about. Next one titled Motorcycle. Leathers and helmet. The right protection for motorcycling. Hi, I'm Dr. Stutz, the world's tallest gynecologist. In order to get the most out of life, we need to protect ourselves from accidents. So, ladies, if you need an expert to help you protect yourself from accidents, call or come by my office today for your appointment. On this one, as you know, Bob, I, uh, I do uh, ride motorcycles, and uh, people are always asking me if I wear a helmet or uh, if I wear leathers, and uh, so there it is. I do. Okay. Well, I have a few questions about that one we'll get to okay, after, sure. after we watch Paul Bunyan here. We all know that laughter is the best medicine. 
Hi, I'm Dr. Stutz, the world's tallest and funniest gynecologist. I'm often confused with Paul Bunyan. My office understands how to use laughter as medicine, but we also know there's nothing funny about a serious gynecological problem. So ladies, if you have a gynecological problem, call or come by my office today for your appointment. Paul Bunyan one's another private joke, but uh, I cut my own firewood. I really enjoy using a chainsaw, and uh, one of my friends called me Paul Bunyan one day, and so that's how I made the commercial. Okay. Like home movies. <laughs> this one's titled The Movie Star. Okay. Ladies, are you a star or want to be treated like one? Hi, I'm Dr. Stutz, and as the world's tallest gynecologist, I understand what it is to be a star. I once had an offer to replace Bubba Smith as a football player, but I decided I couldn't make a living doing beer commercials. Believe it or not, that was the last mistake I ever made. So if you need an expert gynecologist, call or come by my office today for your appointment. You know, Again, that, that one's based on personal experience. Uh, I went to Michigan State University, and the spring prior to that, my family physician arranged a, uh, an interview with Duffy Doherty for me and uh, Duffy Doherty said my gosh you're bigger than Bubba Smith do you play middle guard I said yes I do and he said well I want you to come out and uh, try out for his position and uh, before we go to the next four though I'd like to get to some points about this which has really you know received a lot of attention in town when we think of advertising in general stores advertising retail centers we think about the public being informed about a service and then gaining access to the service and that's usually what the advertising will do we regularly, as an example, see group clinic practices mentioning new services or new facilities in advertising. But what I don't really recall is actually seeing joking or kidding in relation to medical services. And what's a, a little bit disturbing to me is that the subject of gynecology is considered extremely sensitive for most women. In fact, a lot of women don't even want to go to the doctor, especially gynecologists, because they consider that such a private, important part of their body. Shouldn't we really draw a line about joking in relation to a field like gynecology? Well, I, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. Um, I clearly practice probably the most uh, controversial area of medicine. Uh, right now there are debates uh, all over the country and uh, achieving uh, national attention in many cases about sex education. And I'm the guy that has all the information. Um, but to come out and say what I do in the office on television doesn't make polite conversation. And so I sought uh, another way to include people in my life. And uh, each of these commercials, uh, the ones that we've seen and the ones that we will see, are actually a segment of my life. And uh, my patients appreciate understanding what I'm about. Hmm. I don't know. I, 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 something just seems to me you, you're just going a little bit beyond what, what I would like to see as a, as a medical commercial. Why didn't you uh, show yourself working at a medical desk and describing your background, which is an excellent educational background in studying to be an obstetrician, which takes, oh, 13, 14 years after uh, high school to do? For a long why, time. Why not discuss that rather than do this uh, Hollywood image type commercials? Well, uh... It's a, a good point there, uh, uh, Bob. The uh, uh, educational time that I did spend amounted to 54,000 hours. And in the first commercial about the jet pilot, I, uh, I pay respect to the Air Force and the pilots in the Air Force because they're out there risking their lives for us. And I wanted to, I wanted to do more than just advertise myself. I wanted to raise some consciousness in the community about various people that maybe they hadn't thought about. Let's look at the last four commercials now. Sure. Four more. Oh, when we first saw this guy, we swore he was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but when we found out who he was, the Coast to Coast band travels coast to coast just to see the big doc. Yeah, he's so cute. I just love him. I do, too. Ladies, if you're a star and need a doc, don't sell yourself short. Call Big Doc. Now, these, uh, all three of these people are members of a, uh, a band called Coast to Coast that travels all over the country. And now, an important message from Dr. Stutz. Did you know that the Big Doc drove over 1,200 miles one weekend just to make sure I was okay? Yeah, he told me he came to hear me sing. 
Wait a minute. He told me he came to... No, no, no. Oh, girls, not again. Please, don't you know there's enough of the big doc to go around for everybody? Yeah, we know. Hey, can I help it? I think, I think we can actually stop here and not look at the last two, because this really, this really reflected on the part that sort of got to me. Yeah? We're, looking here, we're looking here at what looks like Las Vegas showgirls. I mean, the, that, they you, are. Okay, they are. But they're singers and entertainers. The blonde was Miss Florida in the Miss Universe pageant a few years ago. Now, I've shown these commercials to friends of mine, and the discussion came up that this is sexually suggestive material. I mean, it really caused a lot of negative feelings. Uh, as you look back, don't you think there's a lot of suggestiveness in this? I mean, what do you, what do you think? Well, I'm suggesting that women should see a gynecologist and not their friends because I do have all the information. Um, now, in this particular case, both of these commercials were related to our actual real-life experiences. The um, uh, commercial involving the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar joke, Every time I go and watch these people, they introduce me to the crowd as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar because nobody believes that anybody as tall as I am is a gynecologist. As a matter of fact, until these commercials started airing in this area, uh, the most common question that I was asked was, how tall are you? And the, um, before they even took a breath, they would also ask, do I play basketball? And the answer is in the final commercial, but I do play a little basketball from now on, now and again. But don't you really think that... Uh that it almost so shows a suggestiveness of sexuality that implies that could be going on with the doctor. I mean, I, you're probably not implying that, but that's what frightens me. I mean, I think people might look at that and, and say, sexuality here, doctor with patient, and that scares me. I, what, what, what do you think? Oh, under no circumstances do the women take it that way. Women are, are really intelligent, and especially people that have been watching these music videos, I mean, my goodness, there are, there are topics now that are really, I got my jaws open sometimes when I first heard Madonna's new video. It just, uh, I, I, th I thought, wow, and they're still talking about sex in, in uh, the schoolroom? Goodness gracious, it's in music. So, uh, uh, no, the women that, that come to me, they, they look at these commercials and they, uh, they think they're really funny, and that's what they were supposed to be. Well, I bet people that know you feel that it is joking, but a lot of people that don't really wonder about this, um, the, 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 suggest the suggestiveness that they imply in this. So I would just hope in the future that the commercials could stay on one side of that line and not go over that. And I know you're planning some other ones. We'll be watching and see how they turn out. Well, I have to be a little careful. This advertising <laughs> campaign has been too successful, and I've, I've had to cut back because uh, my, uh, my appointment times are really pretty, pretty tightly booked. <laughs> okay. I want to thank you for coming to explain these commercials to